Hey guys, how are you? Oh, hey, hey guys. Good morning. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning, Felisa. Good morning, Amber. Good morning, she's striving to be like Jesus. Good morning, Jackie. Hey, hey, y'all. This is just going to be, I can't say that this is going to be a quick word. This is a word that the Lord gave me on Sunday uh, as I was sitting in church. And I don't know about y'all. Sometimes when I go to a church um, and the pastors begin to preach about something, like God will give me a whole different message from what they're speaking on. So instead of like, like I'll be listening to them, but I'll be listening to God more, like literally taking notes in my Bible for the word that he's giving me. So God speaks to me a lot when I'm at church and he'll just start giving me his own message from whatever the pastor is talking about. So, and he does that all the time and not just to me, like my sisters in Christ too, like we'll be in church and God will just start giving us our own message from whatever they're talking about. So instead of like a hundred percent listening to the pastor, we're literally sitting there with our Bibles, writing what God is saying, like taking notes. So this is why I tell people all the time, the church is not a building. We are the church. Like we are the church. God didn't die for a building. He died for us. So that happens to me a lot. Like when I'm in church, sometimes I'm listening, but I will begin to zone out and tune the pastor out because I'm trying to listen to what God is saying through their message. So, <laughs> which is funny to me, but yeah. It is what it is. So I just allowed him to speak to me when I was at this church that I've never been to before. Um, and they were talking about the topic that they were talking about is totally different from what God is having me release. Like it went in a whole different direction. But this is why you just have to keep your spiritual ears open. Because I don't know if like, is it blurry? Okay, let me wipe it. Thanks, Badia. Is that better or worse? I don't know. I think it's clean. It looks clear to me, but. Much better. Okay, cool. Thanks, Claudia. So like, I just allow God to speak to me, guys. So I'm going to give you guys this message. Oh, it does look better. Thanks, guys. So I'm just going to like give you guys the word that the Lord gave me on Sunday when I totally, I didn't tune the lady out. I was listening to her. Her sermon was good, but I was listening to God more and what he was saying. And I know that this is a now word for so many people. And he was just, just giving me nuggets. And um, I'm actually going to be pulling from the book of Ruth and which we're all familiar with, but I'm going to give it to you guys how the Lord gave it to me and my spirit. Um, and I'm reading from my CSB Bible, which is the Christian standard Bible. So it's going to be a bit more, um, easy to understand. Um, so yeah, what the Lord is basically saying by this word. Good morning, guys. Good morning, Marcus. Good morning, Miss White. Good morning, Christy. Good morning, Jackie, Tara, Kaylise, um, Tisha, Magusha, Jessica, Miss Shirley, Sherry's vibe. Um, Ashley. Hey, y'all. Hey, April. Hey, Jackie Green. Hey, beautiful men to pieces. Sunshine. That's Candace. Hey, y'all. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Candace, you gave me. I still. God just. He's always working. That's all I'm going to say. Hey, Nikki. Hey, Lisa. Nikki Ross and Lisa Ross. Are y'all sisters? come through family line or did I just like join you guys? I don't know. Hey, Clarice. Good morning, guys. So anyways, I'm going to give you guys the message that the Lord gave me on Sunday. Um, but I, I do think it's really important, guys, that your first teacher be God. Because I find myself what am I trying to say without like making it come out? It takes a lot to spiritually feed me. 
So if I go to a church, I will zone completely out if it's something that the Lord has already spoken. Nine times out of 10, it's it's going to be something the Lord has already spoken to me about. I'll listen, but it takes, if you're spiritually feeding me, it's almost like a job, right? Like when you're hired somewhere and you're a quick learner, so you start to learn the job and then it gets boring and you're just like, I need some like like a challenge, like I need something different. That's how I am spiritually. Like I really need pastors to feed me. And I'm learning a lot of the times that the people that God has been using to feed me, there are people that I don't even know. Like it's it's totally different than like, I can't, I could, ex- you guys get what I'm saying. It takes a lot to spiritually feed me or I will zone out. And it's not that I'm not remaining teachable because I do, but normally when I go to a church, God starts to give me a message as the pastor speaking. And I just start listening to God because yeah. Is that just me? Like, are you guys like that too? Yeah. Okay. So I'm not the only one because I will be sitting there and it'll look like I'm listening, but I'm literally talking to God, even though I'm staring at you. Yeah. Okay. It, it just, I can't, whatever. But uh, God is saying um, there's a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. And that's pulling from Ecclesiastes uh, 3 verse 5. And what he dropped in my spirit this morning is that y'all should have learned how to do this during covid When God allowed COVID to hit, notice I didn't say he caused COVID, but nothing can pass through and happen in this world without God allowing it to happen, right? Because he owns this world. So during COVID, you should have learned a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing because we went from being able to hug each other and shake hands, give each other kisses on the cheek like we're in Paris to a disease happening and we can't do it anymore. So there is a time to embrace when all was well and there was not a dis-ease, okay? And then we couldn't embrace anymore. So you couldn't go around acting the same way you acted before. And you're like, what's up, homie? Give me a hug, kiss, kiss on the cheek. If anything, you were like, huh, no, stay over there. Bless your heart. Hello. And you, you don't even give the church hugs. Like you had a seat at church in between your seats. Like- It was, no, stay over there. Huh? This, y'all, this watch just said, bless your heart and stay over there. Ma'am. Anyways, I don't know what's going on with this. Is this Siri, y'all? Like on these Apple watches, bless your heart and stay over there. I am staying over there, Siri, and the kingdom. Like, she interrupts me. Like, I need this watch to be anointed because apparently, well, I guess she's anointed. She said, bless your heart, stay over there. But then sometimes she's telling me to be quiet. You're too loud. Anyways, y'all should have learned a time to embrace and a time to refrain when the Lord allowed COVID, right? And it's easy to explain because we were able to embrace, a dis-ease came through, and then we weren't able to embrace anymore, right? For a period of time. Some people, y'all better catch this, for some people, it wasn't for a period of time because the people they that they social distance from, those people died. So their time of embracing is, it's, it's gone. But then there's other people that went through COVID and we're here living, so we're able to embrace again. Right? So y'all better catch this word. So there's a difference. Sometimes the refraining from embracing is temporary. Sometimes that thing is eternal. And God is saying, bury the things that I've already deemed as dead. Okay? Release that word yesterday. My face is itching. Holy Spirit. But for some people, the refraining from embracing is like ongoing. It's like indefinitely. Like there's no going back because the people, they they passed away. Lord, rest their souls. But for some of us, we can come back again and embrace. 
Okay, but this is all happening at God's divine timing. And y'all better catch this spiritually. Okay. And that happens when there's a dis-ease. If you break down, down the word disease, disease, it's dis, D-I-S, which translates to meaning not, N-O-T. So D-I-S means not, and then ease. So basically the word dis-ease means not being at ease with something, okay? So it does not necessarily mean that you have to have a deathly illness. Disease literally means not being at ease. And a lot of you guys are not at ease because it is a time to refrain from embracing. You're, you're still wanting to hold on and God is saying there's a time to embrace and there's a time to refrain from embracing. And if he's telling you to refrain from embracing, it's to push you into the new. When COVID happened, guys, we will, that changed everything. We're never going to go back to how it used to be. The past is gone. God done done a new thing, okay? Do you not perceive it? We will never go back to how things used to be. So you hear people saying, I just wish things would go back to normal. Keep wishing. They're not. Step into your new normal, okay? Step into your new normal. So again, the Lord is speaking, saying there's a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. Take this word how you see fit. I'm gonna pull from the book of Ruth. So if you have your Bible, good. If you don't, you can follow along with me and just sit with him on your, um, your own time. I'm not gonna read the whole book of Ruth, but I am gonna read quite a few scriptures. So if you're just here to get your ears itched, this may not be a word for you, but if you're here to hear the word of God, to understand it, to be receptive, to um, start this morning with a fresh perspective and hear what God is saying, then stay in the room, okay? Um, so again, we're pulling from the book of Ruth, okay? And I'm just gonna point out a few things that he gave me um, from the book of Ruth. Now... Initially in the story of Ruth, remember Naomi, okay, whose name means pleasant and gentle, okay? Naomi and her her husband and her sons, they were believers of God. But Ruth and Orpha, the women that her sons married, they were Moabite women. So they represented the lowercase g, okay? They didn't believe in God. Okay, so you already have that unequally yoked marriage, but we're not going to go down, down that road. God will use anything in order to save souls, okay? And at the end of the day, Ruth's soul was saved, all right? And that's the bigger picture. So anyway, we're not going to go down that route because I'll start preaching about something totally different. But um, remember, as Naomi, Ruth, and Orpha are walking to head towards... Um, their new air or Naomi's new home. They're, they were heading back towards like Bethlehem where they came from. Right. And they get to this crossroad and Naomi's like, okay, y'all can go back to y'all's mothers now. Like go, go back to your mom, go back home or whatever. And Orpha is like, they're both weeping Orpha and Ruth. And we're going to read it, but I'm paraphrasing. They're both weeping and they don't want to leave Naomi. Right. So they're both like, we're not leaving you. We're not going anywhere. And Naomi's like, I can't have no more kids for y'all to marry. Like, go back home or whatever. Orpha kissed Naomi goodbye. She took off. Ruth was like, nah, I'm not letting you go. And she held on to Naomi. So you have one daughter-in-law who refrained from embracing and she was like, I'm out. Even though two seconds before she was like, I'm staying with you. Okay, y'all better catch this. Then you have Ruth who said, I'm not leaving you. And she did just what she said. She didn't leave. She held on to Naomi. So Orpha refrained from embracing. Ruth embraced. Okay? Ruth embraced. And they, at this point, they were at a crossroads. So it's like they're in the middle. Naomi's like, y'all go this way. I'm going to go this way. But Ruth stood her ground, okay? The Lord says, let your yes be your yes and your no be your no. Ruth stood her ground. And she went on to say like, I'm not gonna leave you. 
So don't beg me to leave you. Okay. Who does she sound like? Even though she didn't even um, know God at this time, she knew of him, but she didn't um, worship God. They represented the gods or worship the gods because they were Moabites. But she says, don't beg me to leave you. Like I'm staying with you. She literally exhibited characteristics of the Lord Jesus Christ because he says, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Ruth is like, I'm not going nowhere. So don't beg me to leave you. So even though she might not have realized, she was literally exhibiting the characteristics of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then she goes in to say, goes on to say, your God will be my God. So basically at that very moment, she opened her heart up to God. Okay. And that is what our journey is about. It's about saving souls, guys. It's about saving souls. And in this instance, Ruth gave her life to the Lord and things began to transition for her. So I'm going to read starting from chapter one, verse one, and I have notes written. So I'm just going to pull from the notes that the Lord has given me. Yeah, she sounded like Jesus. Exactly, Marcus. So... It says, during the time, during the time of the judges, there was a famine in the land. A man left Bethlehem in Judah with his wife and two sons to stay in the territory of Moab for a while. The man's name was Elimelech and his wife's name was Naomi. The names of the two sons were Malone and Chilion. They were Af Aphrodites, so I don't even know how to pronounce that, from Bethlehem in Judah. They entered the fields of Moab and settled there. Naomi's husband, Elimelech, died and she was left with her two sons. Her two sons took on Moabite women as their wives. One was named Orpha and the second name Ruth. Let's stop right there. One of the meanings in Hebrew of the name Orpha means neck, okay? And it's, it refers to turning back, okay? You use your neck to do what? To look backwards. Y'all can look this up. So one of the meanings of Orpha is neck, N-E-C-K, and it is referring to looking back, to, to turning back, which is exactly what she did, okay? Don't you know the Lord will call you by name? Ruth's meaning of her name comes from the Hebrew word reut. It's spelled R-E-U-T, and it means friend, okay? And for this portion, the Lord brought me to the verse that says, there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother, that was Ruth 100% when it came to this situation, okay? She wasn't willing to just leave and give up and go back to her, her gods, okay? She, she stuck by Naomi. She respected Naomi, okay? Y'all better catch this, okay? So um, after they lived in Moab for about 10 years, 10, the number of completion, both Milan and Chilion also died. And Naomi was left without her two children and without her husband. God will allow stuff that means a whole lot to you to die around you in order to push you into the new. Okay? He will allow things. A lot of the times we say, Lord, resurrect and restore in my life. But don't you know, something got to die for something to be resurrected. If you're saying resurrect something, what done died in your life? Something has to die. Jesus died so that we could live. So that's a whole word in itself that if you're asking God to resurrect something, what has died in your life? That means something has to die. And sometimes that death is not fun. And sometimes it's an actual physical death. Just like for Naomi, she lost all, all her men in her life. Her husband and her two sons. Three, full circle. Okay, anyways. She and her daughters-in-law set out to return from, from the territory of Moab because she had heard in Moab that the Lord had paid attention to his people's needs by providing them food. She left the place where she had been living, accompanied by her two daughters-in-law, and traveled along the road leading back to the land of Judah. So basically, at this point, they're at a crossroads. Again, there's a go left or go right. Her and her daughters are right there. Her, her and her daughters-in-law. 
So Naomi says to them at this crossroads, a lot of y'all are at a crossroad and God is telling you to go one way, the other people to go a different way, but you're embracing instead of refraining from embracing and it's holding stuff up. Okay. So Naomi said to them, each of you go back to your mother's home. May the Lord show kindness to you as you have shown to the dead and to me. May the Lord grant each of you rest in his house of a new husband. She kissed them and they wept loudly. Okay, so Naomi's telling them, go back to where you were born. She said, go back to your mother's home. Basically, go back to where you were born and raised. Okay, Ruth knew that was a no for her. And for a lot of you guys that want to go back to where you were born and raised, God is also telling you, no, walk into the new. This is the time to refrain from embracing. Okay, you can be like uh, Ruth and Orpha and weep. Okay, cry, but walk in the direction that he's calling you to go in. They said to her, we insist on returning with you to your people. It says they said to her. So that means Orpha and Ruth both said, no, nah, we going with you, right? They both said it. It wasn't just Ruth. It was both of them, okay? But Naomi replied, return home, my daughters. Why do you want to go with me? Am I able to have any more sons? who can become your husbands. Don't you know it ain't about what the other person could do for you or what they can produce. It's about what God is going to do for you in that new place, okay? Naomi was looking at it like, I can't help y'all. It wasn't about her helping them. It was about God showing his power and getting the glory, okay? Return home, my daughters. Go on, for I am too old to have another husband. Again, she's still saying, I, I can't have sons. I can't have another husband. God wasn't looking at what she can do, okay? Even if I thought there were still hope for me to have a husband tonight and to bear sons, would you be willing to wait for them to grow up? When God's hand is on it, you ain't waiting for nobody. He waiting for you. And as soon as you say yes, God will open that blessed door, okay? Would you restrain yourselves from remarrying? No, my daughters, my life is too bitter for you to share because the Lord's hand has turned against me, okay? <laughs> so here comes Naomi, whose name means pleasant and gentle, okay? But we haven't even gotten to this part yet. She done changed her whole name to Mara, which means bitter. To be bitter means um, to be, God had me write down the definition, so I don't want to make it up myself. Hold on. Hold on. Let me give you all the definition because he wanted me to give you the definition. I thought I wrote it down, but to be bitter means to be acidic, <laughs> to be aggravated, to be dissatisfied, to be resentful. Okay, so here um, Naomi is, and I haven't even gotten to that part, but we know she changes her name to Mara, a.k.a. Bitter. But God had already deemed her as someone that's, um, that's pleasant and gentle, and he never changed her name. God does not change. She changed her own name to Bitter. God never called her that. Even though she was walking around angry, resentful, upset, God never changed her name. He never changes. And your actions can't make him call you by something else because that's not who he called you to be. So for those of you who think like, oh, I messed up. I just sinned. I just uh, slept with somebody last night. God is calling me by a different name. No, he's not. He's calling you by the person he originally designed you to be. He never changed Naomi's name from pleasant and gentle. She changed her name. And she makes it very known, and we're going to read a little bit more, that she was not happy with the way the Lord Jesus was handling her life. And she made him very aware of it. She never blamed the deaths on anybody else or what she was going through but Jesus, okay? she Even though she knew who God was, she was still upset. And we all get to that point where we know the power of God, but sometimes he makes decisions for our lives and... We act bitter, like we're upset. Don't call me Christina, call me Mara. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, okay. So let me finish, but I'm trying to give y'all everything the Lord gave me. Okay, 
So no, my daughters, my life is much too bitter for you to share because the Lord's hand has turned against me. Okay, again, she didn't blame it on nobody else but the Lord, okay? Again, they wept loudly and Orpha kissed her mother-in-law. She kissed her. She didn't hug her or embrace her. It says she kissed her, okay? So she refrained from embracing. She kissed her, but Ruth clung to her. So you have Orpha that refrained from embracing, Ruth that clung, which means she embraced her mother-in-law, okay? Naomi said, look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods, lowercase g, okay? Follow your sister-in-law. Don't you know when God has a calling on your life, you can't follow other people. You have to follow where God is leading you to go, okay? And that's exactly what Ruth was doing. Even though her mother-in-law is saying, follow, like go, like follow, follow your sister your sister-in-law or whatever, however you want to refer to her. And Naomi's like, nah, like, I mean, Ruth is like, nah, like I'm good. So it says, but Ruth replied, don't plead with me to abandon you. To plead means to beg. So she's telling her mother-in-law, don't beg me to leave you. Okay. <laughs> Again, she exhibited God because we can beg God all day to just forget about us because we're not worthy, blah, blah, blah. God says he'll never leave us or forsake us. So regardless of how much you beg God to leave you alone and to stay away and that you don't want to follow your calling and you get swallowed by the whale and all this stuff, he's never going to leave you guys. Don't plead with me to abandon you or return and not follow you. For wherever you go, I will go. And whenever you wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die. Again, once Ruth said your God will be my God, she opened her heart to the Lord and God was able to work in her life. Okay. Until you recognize that God is God, he can't um, show you miracles. Okay. He couldn't uh, do all the miracles he wanted to do in his own land because the people didn't have the faith. So he had to go elsewhere. So there's a lot that God, God will still show favor to people that don't believe in him because he did show favor to Ruth, even when she was a non-believer, because he opened the door and he granted her a marriage to one of his children. It was unequally yoked, but he knew why he was allowing this marriage between Ruth and um, Naomi's son. It was for a bigger purpose. Okay, so he will bless you even though you don't recognize him as your God. But when you recognize him as the God, the one true God, it opens a blessed door. Okay, when Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped talking to her. Okay, when you see somebody there, they're 100 percent on your side. You just like I can't. There's nothing I could say to make this girl leave me. Okay, Ruth. Let her yes be her yes and her no be her no. And she stood her ground. Again, she exhibited God because God is not a God that changes his mind. He's not confused. He's not over here. Yeah, I'm going to give you this. Then no, I'm, I'm not going to give you that. She was exhibiting God in so many ways. Okay. So the two of them traveled until they came to Bethlehem. When they entered Bethlehem, the whole town was excited about their arrival. And the local women exclaimed, can this be Naomi? Don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara, she answered. For the Almighty, again, she's angry with God, but she's still recognizing him as the Lord of Lord, okay? Like she still knows who God is. She never said, I'm not going to serve him, but she kept putting the blame on him. Why? Because God is the one that allows stuff to happen. Nothing happens to you without him allowing it. Again, I'm not saying he causes. I said he allows it. OK, so even though she's she's bitter, she's like, the Lord has allowed me to go through this. The almighty has taken me through this. Like she's still recognizing him as the Lord of Lords. OK, she never disrespected God's name. OK, for the almighty has made me very bitter. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Don't you know he'll bring you back empty so that you can get what he has for you? OK, you may be feeling like you way up here. And you may be content, but God will make you discontent and take everything from you in order to bless you with better. Okay, you can be upset and bitter, but at the end of the day, you better be like, 
God, I'm upset with you, but I love you. Like, I don't like the situation. Bro, sometimes I'm just like, bro, what are you doing? Like, I'm up here ministering and preaching. Like, what is going on? But I still never forget who he is in my life. And I get upset with the Lord uh, sometimes quite often. I'd be like, bro, what more do you want from me? And sometimes he'll answer and say nothing. But you're going to go through what I'm taking you through because I have a point to make. And sometimes I don't like his points. I feel like his points don't be connecting quick enough. I'm like, Lord, Amazon Prime be delivering tomorrow. You, I know you got more power than Amazon Prime. Why is this thing taking so long? When I can just get on the app and be like, doo, doo, this is what I need. Yeah. Anyways. Y'all can act like y'all don't be saying all that to God, but I do. I'm like, dude, you're God prime. So where is the delivery? It's not on our time, guys. So anyways, so Naomi came back. Oh, actually, let me back up. Why do you call me Naomi since the Lord has opposed me and the Almighty has afflicted me? Again, she's constantly saying the Lord, the Almighty. She never forgets his name. God is saying wherever he's taking you, if you don't like your transition that you're currently in, it feels like everything's falling apart, okay? He's saying, remember him because he's remembering you. Remember him. You can be angry. Sin not. So don't you ever put your mouth to his name in a negative way, okay? Go ahead. Change your name to Mara. I will call you Mara if that's what you want to be called. But God is going to keep calling you Naomi, okay? Pleasant and gentle, all right? Anyways, so fast forward, guys. We know that Ruth goes and she works in Boaz's field. He takes notice of her. Like, he, he knows exactly who she is without her even, like, opening her mouth. Like, God was showing her all kind of favor, right? And... If you fast forward to the last chapter, which is Ruth 4, okay? And by this time, Ruth is married. She's she's all put together. Like, she, she's royalty now. She went from being poor with nothing to being royalty, okay? And a lot, of, <laughs> that is so powerful. A lot of you guys are going to, going from bankrupt, not having a car, not having a job, your bank account is on negative 35 cents, and then the bank keeps charging you these $35 overdraft fees. You keep having to call them to ask them if they can waive them because blah, 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 blah. You're going from all of that to royalty, even though it may not look like it. You may feel like you are Ruth up there gathering straps from the field, okay? But God is saying, there's a method to my madness. Like, I got you. Your account's not always gonna be uh, negative 35 cents or negative 3,500. He's transitioning you if you just put in the work. Ruth didn't go with Naomi and just stay in the house and sleep all day and eat her cupcakes and cookie crumble or crumble cookie, however you pronounce the cookie place, and just sit in her sadness. She went out to work. And as she was working in the field, guys, I'm pretty sure it was pretty hot in that field too. And even though Boaz showed her favor, she still had work to do. She couldn't just sit home and people knock on the door and bring her and her mother-in-law food. She had to get out and work. You have to get out and work and do what God has told you to do. You have to refrain from embracing the things he's told you to refrain from, embrace the things he's told you to embrace, cross over and go into this new place, uh, make, make God your God, OK, if you haven't done that so that he could open this door for you. And even when he opens the door, you still have work to do. You have to go out in the field and do what you need to do. OK, until the appointed time where God is going to have you sit at that man's feet or that person's feet, who's your divine helper. They're going to embrace you without any questions because they're going to know exactly who you are, because God already told them who you are. OK, and you're going to end up joined together with this divine connection, whether it is a marriage, a friend, whoever. This is not just for, uh, this is not just a marriage word. This is refraining from embracing what God has already deemed as dead, okay? And embracing the new, even if it's unfamiliar, okay? 
So you get to that point where that marriage comes together, that union comes together, that uniting comes together, whatever God has promised you, look at that as that union coming together, that birthing coming together. And during that process, when that process is complete, is when every area in your life that was disabled will be enabled, okay? And for this part, the Lord wants me to pull from Ruth chapter four, uh, verses 13. It says, Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. There was a uniting, guys. He slept with her and the Lord granted conception to her and she gave birth to a son. He granted conception to her. Some versions say he enabled her, which means if he granted conce conception or enabled her in her previous marriage, it was not granted or enabled. He granted or enabled her to conceive when she got into the marriage that he had for her. Yeah, y'all better catch this. To grant or enable means to give authority to, to make able, to give power to, to award, to agree to. So if he's saying, I enabled her to conceive before she wasn't enabled, or I granted her to conceive before that wasn't granted. So he blessed her, for, he um, honored her first marriage, but he blessed her second marriage. He honored whatever you were doing before, he honored it because you're still alive. So even if it was wrong and you were just doing your own thing, he showed you grace and mercy. And he still kept you, even though you probably weren't in the right um area that he wanted you in. He kept you. He showed favor. But now that you've transitioned, now that you're transitioning, he's going to enable you. He's going to grant you to give birth to the things that he's promised you. So yeah, he honored her first marriage, but he blessed Ruth's second marriage. And if you read um, from verse 18 to verse 22, it starts talking about um, the family line. And Ruth David was a part of Ruth's family line. Le Guys, that I know y'all got the word. I'm not even going to keep going. God is saying it's a time to, um, to refrain from embracing. It's a time to embrace. God may have honored your life before. And some of you, you weren't living a, a horrible life before. You were following God, but you, was, you were doing it out of contentment. It was an area that you were content in. Now he's telling you, cross over. No, you don't know nobody over here, but I'm your God. You're going to be okay. You're going to be shown favor. You have work to do over here, but you're not going to have to work for a long time. Ruth didn't work for a long time in that field, okay? God is a God of swiftly, suddenly, quickly, okay? He didn't kill the things in your life in order for you to stay and live um, content, Yes, Paul says he's learned to be content in everything, and you should, because you have God. But he didn't allow those things in your life to die and come full circle. Like Naomi, she lost her husband and her two sons. That's three, full circle, okay? He didn't allow those things to die in her life so that she could walk around talking about, I'm Mara, I'm so bitter. Oh, when Naomi's life changed, and I didn't read the whole um, chapter, you guys can read it. When Naomi's life changed, this lady was happy. She was living in royalty. She was now a grandma. Like, she, she's good. She's provided for. She ain't have to do no work. All she, yeah, she had to do work as far as transition and go to where God was sending her back to. But when she got there, Ruth did the work. So in a way, they were both each other's divine helpers. Y'all. That's the word. The Lord is saying, for whoever this word is for, something had to die in order for something to resurrect. So if you're praying, Lord, resurrect my marriage, resurrect this, resurrect that, something got to die for it to come back to life, guys. But then you have a job to do. Okay? Go ahead. Change your name because you bitter and angry and mad. God is still calling you pleasant and gentle. Because that's who he created you to be. So that's the word, y'all. I'm going to get off here and get to work. Um, 
me see. Oh, y'all caught the word. I'm so proud of y'all. Come on, spiritual ears. Uh, yeah, okay. I'll go back and read y'all's message. Um, but you guys are welcome. Enjoy the rest of your day. Um, that's the word the Lord gave me on Sunday. So just remember COVID, okay? God taught you how to refrain from embracing with COVID. And if you're like me, I've been pulled over for speeding. The cop asked me, why are you speeding? I said, it's social distancing. So apparently I got the bit of the wrong memo because um, that's not what, like, you can't social distance your car. But that was my excuse. I was like, it's social distance, sir. Like, it's COVID. And I would use that when I would get pulled over. And not even in this challenger, guys. I haven't gotten a ticket. Like, I really drive safely. But I would get pulled over and the cop would be like, why are you speeding? Because it's COVID and it's social distance. So I'm trying to like keep my distance away from the, the other people. So don't be like Nina. Okay. Don't try to just use stuff to your advantage. But God literally taught us how to social distance when we stopped being able to hug people and we just be like, you know, the head nod. What's up? Okay. And some of us are still in that mindset because I, I don't know about you guys. When I'm in the store, if someone sneezes or coughs, I give them like the look of like death and I have to repent because you can't just cough or sneeze. It's not normal anymore. So I'm like, why did you just do that? Even though it doesn't mean they have COVID, I'm just like, stop. So I have to like repent. I'm like, why did you just look at them like that, Nina? Because it's not normal to cough anymore. So my mindset's changed. So pray for your girl, okay? But don't be like Nina. Don't try to social distance your car. But whatever God is telling you to embrace, embrace whatever he's telling you to bury and let it go and cross over and whatever, do it. And for some of you guys, you have a divine connection just like Naomi and God has told you to go live with this person. There's something over here. Go stay with that person. Move to this state. And you're like, no, let me just go say bye to my family, blah, blah, blah. We already talked about that. The Lord says, um, if you put your hand to the plow and you look back, you're not fit for the kingdom. Okay? So you can't say yes to God and be like Orpha, whose name means neck, and be like, okay, let me say bye to my past. Uh, No, when you say yes to God, you don't already said bye to your past because you're saying yes to whatever he has for you. And whatever he has for you, it's in front of you. It's not behind you. Okay? So anyways. I love you guys. I'm going to get off here because I'll keep talking because I'm a talker and I don't care. But love you guys. Bye.